Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College in Wheaton, Illinois. This year, in our second season, we're doing something different. We are partnering with the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas, to bring you these podcasts. My name is David Capes. I'm the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Library and former Dean in the School of Biblical and Theological Studies at Wheaton College. Our purpose in these podcasts is really pretty simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it and study it, but also to live it. Joining me today is Dr. Alex Loney, who's Associate Professor of Classical Languages at Wheaton College. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you, David. It's good, it's good to have you here. Now, how long have you been at Wheaton College? Five years, and I've been doing Greek and Latin, ancient Greek, classical Greek, and Latin since 2015. So uh, when a person comes to study, do you do the graduate courses or the undergraduate courses, or maybe a combination of both? I teach only undergraduate courses, though I do regularly have graduate students, particularly those interested in Latin, and for all that it, that it, you can learn about the history of the church through Latin. I regularly have graduate students in my some of my undergraduate courses, which they can count towards graduate credit. I need to bone up on my Latin to get better on it. So I'm going to come up and, and see you, and you can school me a little bit on, on how that works. Uh, it's been a number sure. of years since I've done Latin. And, and, our, and Mark Lanier, who's the founder of our library, just bought some Latin manuscripts from the Middle Ages. He said, I want you to translate these. And so, I said, uh, so anyway, I'm stuttering all the way. But anyway, so I know who I can call. I can send you a photograph of these things and say, hey, Alex translate these for me and I'll buy you dinner next time I'm up in Wheaton. Okay. <laughs> hey, we're going like to we're going to talk about Herodotus today. Now, Herodotus lived a long time before the New Testament was written. Who is Herodotus and why is he kind of significant to our conversation today? Well, he lived in the 5th century BC. He's generally known as the father of history because he was the first writer from the classical world to put together a long prose account of events that happened bef before and some contemporaneous with him. And he, he gave us this long, great picture about what the Greeks did and believed. And and so he, he's this sort of irreplaceable kind of... Yeah. For that, for those reasons, and his book is called just the histories or something like that, right? Well, that's itself a kind of interesting question because he 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 didn't give it a title exactly. We call it the histories, but in his in his first line, he invents the term history, historiae, hmm. and he, which really meant an investigation, hmm. a looking into, and we've afterwards called it the histories, but he invented that he sort term. of invented the term it didn't yeah. exist before then okay so so there's you have a quote from him uh, that, I, that i'd like for you to read in in english don't don't read it in greek because it's too long for that but read it read it for us and then let's tell us a little bit about uh, the connection between the bible in a sense and we're putting that that term in, in quotes the bible of the greeks and uh, mm. as opposed to kind of the, the the Bible that comes to be that we know today. So tell us, read read that quote for us, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, let, let me just read the juicy bit here. He says, Herodotus right, says, I suppose Hesiod and Homer flourished not more than 400 years earlier than I, and these are the ones who taught the Greeks the descent of the gods and gave the gods their names, and determined their spheres and functions, and described their outward forms. Hmm. So, what is what is Herodotus get telling us there about the significance of Homer and Hesiod? Yeah, I mean, I think he's he's giving us a picture of them as writers who were up to something like what the biblical writers were doing in the sense of giving a account of what the divine world looked mm -hmm. like and the relationship that God, in their, in their case, gods have 
with human beings. Mm -hmm. and, and you heard that in that, that list of things, you know, right. like the descent of the gods. And already, though, we, we can see, you know, certain kinds of differences in there with the kinds of accounts that they're going to give compared to what we see in the Bible. And it's useful, I think, to read Homer and Hesiod because of the contrast that they might give us mm -hmm. for for what we find in the Bible. Because Homer and Hesiod, they're writing and flourishing, go, going back to that, 400 years before, he thinks. He doesn't have an exact chronology. No. But that would be roughly about the time of the kings, right? And in, yeah. in, in the biblical world. And so he's giving an account of things from the divine side, what the gods are like, where they came from, mm -hmm. you know, how, how influential they are in the world, how they interacted with people. And yet the biblical account is, is a very different account, isn't it? Yeah. I, you know, I, again, actually, the date of the composition of Homer's poems and Hesiod's poems is just as complicated and contested as the people trying to work out the date of the composition of the mm, different parts point. of the Bible. Yeah. And, you know, so Herodotus has one view of it, but it's, it's very open-ended, no more than 400 years earlier. Yeah. So yeah. the issue then, I think that what gets interesting in it, I think, is the way that we read the Hesiod and Homer's description here, but well, what Herodotus says is that when he says, you know, they taught the descent of the gods, I didn't think if you read Hesiod and Homer, you'll find something like stories about how the gods were born, had, mm -hmm. had these children, and you'll find a world in which, you know, Zeus comes to be through a contest with his own with his own father and his own father you know tried to try to keep him from being born and he had to be smuggled mm. by his mother uh after after being birthed so that, so that he wasn't hidden away and or even killed if you could kill a god but uh, <laughs> yeah and and eventually he comes to to, to triumph over Cronos, his mm. father mm. and through an act of retribution come to bring the new kind of order to the world right, right. that that existed at that day so that's kind of the store a story about what he means of descent of the gods right right which is a, interesting as a very as a rather different kind of way to view the origins of the world that we have yeah today compared to i think what the biblical writers were up to right and so it it provides i mean it's intrinsically interesting on its own mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. a as great literature, but it also provides us a, an important background against which yeah. the accounts of how the world came to be mm -hmm. and how a God like Jesus would be born into the world. You know, the, 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 it strikes me that, that the, the biblical writers, they probably were not aware of Herodotus, you know, could have been, probably not aware of Homer and, and Hesiod and other, other writers. They could have been, we don't know. But they clearly have a different view of the God of Israel and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, where he came from and what he's up to in the world. And it's, it's, it's to me, very interesting to be able to sort of count, put these as po uh, points and counterpoints together to see the differences that come about. Dr. Dr. Alexander Loney, thank you so much for being with us today here on Exegetically Speaking. Thanks as well to Silvio Vasquez, Rebecca Larson, and Krista Sanchez for helping us edit and produce the podcast. If you want to study biblical languages, then the best place to do that is Wheaton College. They have the best program, hands down, than other schools that I've ever been affiliated with. And whether you're doing this at a graduate or an undergraduate level. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for Modern and Classical Languages. Get started today. If you have questions or comments about this podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.